Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Notice where it's most obvious in the body. <clears throat> Focus your attention there, and then ask yourself if it's comfortable. You can try longer breathing, shorter breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow. Experiment for a while to see what breathing feels good for the body right now. You're trying to develop your awareness here in the present moment, because the present moment is where you're building your life. It comes out of your intentions. And the only time you can have an influence on your intentions is right now. You can't change your past intentions. As for your future intentions, you have to watch them while they're happening and try to head them in the right direction, because it's your intentions that shape your life. And the intentions that lead to the actions that were become your true treasures. We live in this world and we try to amass wealth of various kinds, wealth in terms of knowledge, wealth in terms of material things, wealth in terms of our status. And we can shore things up for a while, but then these things tend to fall apart. And what do we have then? Well, we have the goodness or badness of our actions to fall back on. And bad actions aren't anything you want to fall back on, because they don't support you. They're like big holes in the floor. You step through them and you don't know where you're going to go. Like a game of chutes and ladders. But if you have good actions to fall back on, then they support you to make sure you don't fall in this lifetime and in future lifetimes. Just now we had a ceremony for someone who passed away. I looked at his age. He's a year or two younger than I am. It keeps reminding you that we don't know when we're going to go. It's not the case that the older people all go first and then the younger people. Sometimes the younger people go first. Your age is no guarantee. So what do you have is your guarantee that will carry you through even when you have to leave this body. Well, your good actions. And so make sure your mind is in good shape. And this is why we meditate, because good actions come out of a good mind. Your mind is in good shape, then you are mindful and you're alert. These are qualities we develop as we stay with the breath. You keep the breath in mind, and then you watch the breath, and you watch your mind and make sure that it stays with the breath. And then you develop a quality called ardency, which means you try to do this well. As soon as you detect that the mind is wandering off, you bring it right back. You wander yourself again, bring it right back again. Show him who is in charge. Otherwise, all the different defilements of the mind, they take charge. They come and they whisper and say, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And if you're not really mindful, you just go with whatever occurs to the mind, thinking that it's you in there talking. But you have to ask yourself, if it doesn't have your true well-being in mind, why do you want to identify with it as you? Just say there are these voices in the mind, and some of them are good and some of them are not. So you sort through them and follow only the voices that tell you to do things that would be to your long-term welfare and happiness. And if you have a sense of well-being with the breath right now, that makes you less hungry to go for short-term help and happiness. It's because we're hungry that we do things that we know are not right. But we say, well, I need something right now to give me some satisfaction. I'll learn how to use the breath to get some satisfaction in the present moment, to get a sense of well-being inside. That gives you strength. So you not only know what the right thing is to do, but you also have the strength to carry through. That's when you can depend on your actions. Then you have actions that really will support you. That's your genuine wealth. <laughs>